What is going on, people? Welcome back. Today, I'll be reacting to another episode of Abba and Preach. This one is titled, excuse me, Words Are Not Violence, Dave Chappelle versus Trans Folks. So Dave Chappelle has been in the news lately for saying some pretty controversial things about the trans community, such as misgendering them, so referring to trans women as men, even though he is aware that it means a lot to the trans community to be identified as who they see themselves as, how they see themselves. He's criticized Time Magazine for making the woman of the year a trans woman. He says that we should all be mad about that, <laughs> which is silly. And I don't know if that's part of his joke, but of course, Time Magazine's decision to decide who's going to be the woman of the year has nothing to do with my life or anything that I have going on. But I can see why it would mean a lot to the trans community and trans women in particular to have such a prestigious magazine that people read, if anyone does read it, to acknowledge and validate their existence. So there's that. I think Chappelle has also made some jokes that are divisive and split the trans community from the black community, which I think is a very dangerous thing because it assumes that there are no trans people in the black community, which renders them and their struggles as invisible. And that's not good. But all in all, I think we as a society place way too much stock in what celebrities say about social issues in the first place. Although I understand that with great power comes great responsibility. And so if you have a platform, it is perhaps your moral and social duty to use that platform responsibly so as to not re-stigmatize an entire group of people who already are on the receiving end of disproportionate violence because violence against the LGBT community is a thing. It does happen to them disproportionately and the perpetrators of it are people like me, heterosexual men. Yeah, let's hop into the video. I'm curious to hear what Abba and Preach have to say about the issue. All right, today's topic. Dave, Ooh, let me turn this up. Dave Chappelle and this Netflix debacle. So there's been a lot of backlash in regards to his special. He's made references to trans people. Some people feel like it's hateful, et cetera, et cetera. And um, there's been a lot of interesting responses. Well, I think it's important to give context though, rather than saying et cetera, et cetera. Of course, Abba and Preach can run their video however they would like. This is just me giving a simple critique based on what I'm observing. I think it's important to stick some quotes uh, so that the audience can decide whether or not Dave Chappelle's opinions and thoughts on the trans community are indeed offensive. What difference that will make in people's ultimate conclusions about how to support Dave Chappelle or how to support the trans community, it's hard to know, but it's at least worth giving that context. Because we live in a society where people don't do their homework and people don't do their research. And despite not doing their homework or their research, they make broad conclusions about the world anyway. I think that's a very lazy way to exist in a society where we are indebted to one another and we are connected in many ways. Full, et cetera, et cetera. And um, there's been a lot of interesting responses. Joey Soloway, the creator of the Amazon series, Transparent, saying this is gender violence. Sharing his outrageous comedic humiliation in front of thousands of people and then broad Broadcasting it to hundreds of millions of people is infinitely amplified gender violence. I think the Academy has generated an abundance of social science research and data supporting the idea that words can translate to violence, which is to say words generate ideas. Ideas generate behavior. Behavior generates outcomes. And so if you follow that sequential chain, then it is accurate to say that words can facilitate violence. With that being said, I do think there's a disconnect between the academy and people outside of it, the academy saying like the university. I think there's a clear disconnect between academics who sit in ivory tire Ivory Towers, Ivory Towers with their heads inside of books and the people on the outside who are facing real life problems. So the language that academics such as this person, the research that they come up with doesn't always translate to people on the outside. So when we hear them say that this is gender violence, like Dave Chappelle's words are gender violent. We take that literally. And that's the fault of these academics who come up with this research because they are not able to properly communicate and articulate 
their findings, which do have great insight. And as a result, a lot of people gravitate towards YouTube pundits for answers. Y'all look to us for answers, for insight, because Lord knows that most academics, although they are doing important research that does have real life implications, oftentimes that research is not accessible to people on the outside. And so when we hear something like, this is gender violence, we're like, no, it's not. It's words, it's language. Words do not equate to violence. So I think as an academic myself, as someone who has produced research on the weaponization of political discourse in particular, academics are failing society and we are not helping any cause, any social justice cause by distorting words in reality. In fact, we end up reinforcing the very things that we are criticizing, which is the distortion of words and the manipulation of them to push a certain agenda. With that being said, this is just a small segment that I'm reading from this person's work. So take it for what it's worth. I want trans representation on the Netflix board, a trans person on the effing Netflix board this f***ing week. Uh, and see, that's another, I mean, I respect that person and their identity and their desire for representation in positions of power. With that being said, they need to understand the privilege that they have as a highly educated, white, relatively affluent trans person. And what I mean by that is having trans representation on a Netflix board will not eliminate anti-trans sentiment. It's not going to structurally or culturally alleviate the problems that trans people face on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think both Chappelle and some of the people that he is criticizing, which honestly, I think he's criticizing people like this. I think when he, when he criticizes trans people, he doesn't think about poor and disenfranchised trans folk that are the main subjects of violence and abuse and hate. I think when Dave Chappelle thinks about trans people, he envisions folks like this professor who's sitting in an ivory t tower who are highly educated and have elitist views on everyone else and use their position of power to complain about not having enough representation on a Netflix board. And I think that is a blind spot on his behalf. Representation on the Netflix board, a trans person on the effing Netflix board this f***ing week. Okay. And you can hear this a lot. People are feeling like what Dave Chappelle said is violence, okay? And I don't know how to tell you guys this. I don't know if you're hearing that a lot, though. This is the first time I've heard that. Any simpler terms, but in no way, shape, or form are words violence. They never have been. They never will be. Unless someone threatens you with violence, which is illegal. No, no. I, I think we're playing semantics here. Words shape ideas, which facilitate behaviors which can manifest through violence. So to say that words are not violence is not a grand epiphany, Abba. <laughs> You're not saying anything that people don't already know. I think a better way to say it would be words are not violence and they can have violent consequences. It's not violence. Words are never going to be violence. Well, well Abba, what he says leads to physical harm. Sure, maybe. Maybe you can make that case. A lot of things lead to physical It's not a maybe. In terms of words. Maybe you gossip about somebody. That could lead to physical harm. Maybe you give somebody- But there's a difference between gossiping about someone and creating discourse that feeds and perpetuates a cycle of systemic abuse that is directed towards one large group of people consisting of hundreds of thousands. Gossiping about Susie at your job might result in you getting your ass whooped by Susie's boyfriend after work. I don't know. But that's not the same as being on a stage in front of millions of people giving opinions on culture and politics that reinforce a set of beliefs folks already have on a particular issue. Body too much stress when you yell at them. That could lead to physical harm. A lot of words could lead to like induce stress and things like that. But that's not the same as violence. Words have meanings. And when you change that to suit whatever narrative you want, it has real world implications. 
when you tell people i think folks can watch the same insight towards dave Chappelle's claims about trans people though and the ways in which he minimizes their identity that their opinions are violence you are inherently justifying a violent reaction that's why you have goobers like antifa who think it's perfectly acceptable to show up to places and beat them there why so when you tell people their work their opinions are violence that justifies violence so when you tell so and that's how antifa i don't understand it's like antifa inherently just that their opinions are violence you are inherently justifying a violent reaction that's why you have goobers like antifa so when you tell people their opinions are violence you are inherently justifying a violent reaction i and then antifa i don't under i don't understand that logic i think those who are engaging the violence have already justified their violence through various sources of knowledge whether it is gavin mcginnis telling them that they should go to charlottesville and fuck everything up or whether it's trump supporters going to donald trump and having donald trump tell them to storm the capitol you are inherently justifying a violent reaction that's why you have goobers like antifa who think it's perfectly acceptable to show up to places and beat them there. Why? Because their ideas are violent. We're devolving into a weird- I think that's a misrepresentation of Antifa's philosophy, which is to say Antifa doesn't show up to protests unless other violent groups are there. And in that way, Antifa claims to provide a foil to violence with violence. And I just don't, I, I don't see where Abba is going with this society where we're saying oh if you don't say what i like that's violence yeah. excuse me are you saying i assaulted you what the f are you talking about what, See, what is that this is the issue yep yeah he's he's right about this part he's right about this part words lose meaning when you oversimplify them and apply them in an incorrect context which is what this particular scholar I believe is guilty of. So I agree with him on that wholeheartedly. And with that being said, that doesn't negate or neglect the fact that trans people, again, like this, this is the issue with playing the culture wars and listening to what celebrities have to say about various issues because they never do it justice. They always reduce them to opinions and thoughts and beliefs when there is a lived reality. There are lived experiences of those you are talking about. And instead of us coming together as a society and talking about like all right like we see trans people are being mocked dragged through the mud and dogged out so what are we going to do about that instead of that we're focused on fucking dave Chappelle, all the anti-trans legislation that's being put into place right now and we're focusing on what the fuck dave Chappelle has to, who gives a fuck about what dave Chappelle has to say about trans people the the only people that should give a fuck are trans people if they if they care about that if that hurts them then it is their prerogative to you want to boycott him boycott him you want to criticize him <laughs> criticize him just because you have opinions that are controversial doesn't make you immune to the backlash that you're getting that's not the same as being canceled sorry to tell you dave Chappelle is making a lot of money off the tours that he's going on with his anti-trans humor and he hasn't been canceled yet which is why he said in his in his uh stand-up routine if this is what cancel being canceled feels like i like it and that is an indictment of the left how arrogant it can sometimes be with this notion of canceling you know dave Chappelle said, we're gonna cancel we're gonna cancel yo cancel culture it does not work in many ways it is a fixture of our imagination and we're missing the forest for the trees when we spend so much time thinking and talking about an illusion like yo there are real life issues that people are going through Fuck cancel culture. like that ain't a thing why are you wasting my time sometimes i watch like some of these, and I'm like, yo, I'm literally wasting my time hearing discourse about cancel culture. Like it's not a thing. People with wealth, power, and privilege using their words to reinscribe other groups as defective, as subjects of mockery, that those are issues. But this cancel culture thing, like get out of here. I don't want to, I'm tired of hearing that word. 
it, it loses does that even mean? It, it, yeah, it, it loses its meaning. Words are violent. Behaving or involving physical force intended to hurt, damage, or kill someone or something. You know, even if we grant you that what he's saying is hateful, mm -hmm. even if we grant you that what. You, if we grant it, which I don't, I do not believe it's hateful. But yeah, I, I do think they're coming in with a bias as well. He's like, they already know what their script is, which I love Abba and Preach. And one of the things that makes me take something away from their content when I watch these videos is that I can't predict what their opinions are. However, there are certain topics where their opinions are predictable. That is how I get a good gauge on who to listen to yeah on who to listen to like if i can predict what your stance is gonna be on a whole host of topics then there's no point in me listening to you or going to you as a source of information or knowledge because at a certain point you are just repeating what your respective group has to say about the same fucking issue why would i want to go unless i'm trying to confirm my own biases why would i want to go to someone to hear my biases confirmed to me. Sometimes I wanna be challenged. Sometimes it is necessary for me to be challenged, to have my thoughts, opinions, and ideas challenged. You're entitled to view it however, it's subjective in that sense, okay? If you feel that way, it still doesn't qualify as violence. He was violent towards me. What happened? How did he hit you? No, he said a bunch of things that were terrible. That's not violence, I'm sorry. Okay? Uh, it, and, 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 and he said and, a bunch of things that you deemed terrible. Exactly. And then they have another line. Yeah, but we ha we also have to be careful with this notion of subjectivity because it can be it can be applied across the spectrum, right? Okay, what Hitler said wasn't necessarily violent. The ways in which he classified and categorized Jews in Western Europe was not violent, and therefore, any critiques of what he said are invalid which is essentially what they're getting at, but in the context of Dave Chappelle and trans folks. And I'm not trying to draw a comparison. I'm just presenting this contrast to let you know like the parameters of the discussion based on principle. Which I think is crazy, which is silence is violence. I heard that a lot. Silence is violence. <laughs> so if you say what I don't like, you're being violent. If you don't speak, you're being violent. At some point, we're gonna get to a point where it's like, either say exactly what I said, or it's violence. And this is how they're co-opting folks into thinking exactly what they want. You cannot not speak on an issue, right? If you not speak on that issue, you're being violent. You're being violent, you, or, 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 or you're encouraging the oppression. This language is, look at this. This lady was just eating food. During the what, Black Lives what? Matter stuff, right? This lady was just eating at a restaurant and because she wasn't out there protesting, they surrounded her out of the restaurant. She was on the terrace. And the if that if that is the truth of the story, I don't know. I don't know the context, what happened before that. I don't know. I'm going off of what Abba is saying. Which, again, I would caution people to actually fucking think for yourselves, right? If what he's saying is factual, then that is wrong. That is wrong. And those people should be ashamed of themselves. They're like, white silence is violence. It's like, what? And I've heard that Is that a lot. what they're saying? I've, I've heard, heard that a lot. lot. Every time there's a tragedy. Well, you remember when it happened, when, when, when the, the black hat happened? The black hat happened, and there's a bunch of people that were not posting the black square. <laughs> And then, and, and what, by the way, the blows in the black square was a blackout so that more black voices would be heard. But what it did was you just see black squared. Yeah, it was just an act of performative wokeness. I agree entirely. And I do think that's where the left, the cultural left diverges with the rest of society um, when they engage in these acts of performative wokeness that don't necessarily change anything for the better but are construed just to make people feel like heroes and all the black forces were submerged but i digress when people were not posting that black square they were they went in the dm i know i know it happened in the dance committee why aren't you not there's some people in the dance committee came after the uh, of the people why aren't you not posting the black square yeah because it you can't not want to be involved in something. You can't not be knowledgeable about something and feel uninformed. You can't be unsure about anything. If you don't... That's not true. <laughs> there, 
that's not true. Most people aren't informed. Most people aren't knowledgeable um, to the extent that at least they probably should be about social issues and their ramifications. With that being said, I do agree with the gist of what ABBA is getting at, if I understand him correctly, because I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. I do believe these dudes are genuine in their cultural critiques and commentary. I think what ABBA is getting at is that oftentimes the left purports itself to be a bastion of acceptance and tolerance, and yet it is intolerant towards ignorance and lack of understanding. And in that sense, the left itself ends up looking ignorant, like they don't understand opposing viewpoints, or like they are unwilling to understand opposing viewpoints. And I do agree with him in that regard. Don't speak, you're engaging in violence. Think about the implications of that. Yeah. You're engaging in violence. Just like when you it- know, I, I also think it's irresponsible for him to keep repeating this phrase that you know the the scholar said as if like that's the opinion of everyone on the left and everyone who supports the trans community and everyone in the trans community that language is violence i think in effect he ends up minimizing the plight and predicament of trans folks when he places the opinion of a highly educated white affluent scholar at the center of the discussion, just like we minimize the issue when we place the opinion of a super influential comedian who has a great amount of power, privilege, and wealth at the center of our dialogue. We end up missing, again, the trees for the forest. No, they don't even take into consideration. Sometimes the motherfucker is just tired. Well, if you're tired, you're being violent. Nigga, what? You know, I don't want to hear about every tragedy that happens over the world. Abba, how come you haven't spoken about Palestine? I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to be informed. That's violence. What are you smoking? Meanwhile, those people. What are you smoking? Meanwhile, those people are not posting anything about Haiti. They're not posting about nothing about Chile, yeah. about Colombia, about none of it's these not, countries. Oh, are you being violent because you haven't spoken about it? Soon it's going to be ignorance is violence. Being unaware is violence. And wearing, it, and it, wearing, 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 wearing. Yeah, they wearing, be moving. Wearing, you know, you're, you're wearing no socks. Yeah. Being violent right now. Yo, these people are weird. Go wear socks. No, no. Being violent. No. I, I completely, I mean, of course, they're um, being a little dramatic, but I agree with, with what they're saying. People, like, dude, at the end of the day, you got to live your life, man. You got to live your life. And if you don't want to spend it being inundated with doom and gloom and the issues that are affecting everyone around you 24-7, then that is your prerogative. And I think that is a healthy approach to life. You know, when you talk to a lot of these activists that fight for the rights and civil liberties of others 24-7 on call, they miss a significant and meaningful part of their lives. In some cases, they end up missing the meaning of life. And granted, if you decide to make that your career path, then those are sacrifices that you have to make, but not everybody wants to make those sacrifices and that's okay. And people shouldn't be uh, attacked for not wanting to be 24 seven social media activists. I agree with them. My toes are violent. Yes, they are. They're not pretty. They're, they're violent. They're ugly. That's violent. That, that is, is violent. Ugly is violent. God damn. I've had a violent reaction. I don't Bruh. Know. And, and I think why this is important in this conversation is that when we look at a stand-up comedian doing jokes, right? Jokes that we may not agree with or telling a story from a perspective we don't like. We don't try to engage anything with words anymore. It's, they literally try to cancel. They said, get them deplatformed. Take the money and give it to trans creators right uh take the money and put it into trans causes make sure that there's a disclaimer saying this is transphobia according to who according to who 
Because you think so? What if there's other trans people who don't? Who are you to label this? Because And, and that's the point, though, Abba. There are other trans people who don't. Uh, but I understand that he's criticizing a very specific slice of people who had uh, negative things to say about Dave Chappelle's performance. Think about it. If they get you to accept that words are violence, then yeah, there's a justification for stopping Dave Chappelle. That's a real justification. He's being violent on stage. Mm -hmm. Violence is unacceptable in society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you can convince everyone that what he said, his words are violence, then you can get people to believe anything. Then no matter what you say, no matter what you say and anybody says it, if you can deem it violent, you can cancel it. Imagine this. Imagine That's you, a good point. You That's go out point. and you say, hey, this person is ugly. I don't think they're attractive at all. That's violent. And that person dies because someone killed them. You, because you said that on a public platform, you are participating in their murder. Why? Because your words link to that it caused physical they'll but abba that's the point they're making about dave chappelle make leaps and bounds that you won't believe and you might be thinking oh abba you're being hyperbolic no. did you ever think we'd get to a point where words became violence because i certainly didn't think that 15 20 years ago did you am i crazy no you're violent did you think we would get to a point where when a criminal and there's a female change room. A male criminal enters a female change room when the females say that they feel un See, this is a uh, Fo Fox News talking point, man. This is Abba, come on. Safe in that I, I guess, you know, I, I probably, there, there are issues where I'm not, you know, and I probably repeat or certain tropes and, but, I can't approve of that. Change room. That's violence. They are attacked. And everyone said the females were being violent for not wanting that trans man, yep. that trans woman who, who was a criminal. Taking red herrings and outliers and applying them to systemic issues, it's, it's, not, it's not a good way to structure your argument. What the data tells us is that that isn't a frequent occurrence. In fact, it's only happened a handful of times. And if we consider the fact that the United States consists of what? well over 350 million people. And those situations have only trans transpired a handful of times, then it's not indicative of larger social trends. So this idea that trans people are running into bathrooms and assaulting women, and therefore trans women shouldn't be able to use bathrooms or trans people shouldn't be able to use women's restrooms is one that doesn't hold any water and i know that i probably lost 90 percent of you by now because everyone is a fan of who they're a fan of and god forbid someone with no subscribers makes a critique against the uh opinion of someone with millions of subscribers and you know well you ain't shit nobody knows you like hey man a solid argument is a solid argument. This doesn't mean that I don't like Abba and Preach. This doesn't mean that I don't get anything out of their content and that I'm not stimulated by it. It doesn't mean that I think what they're putting out is garbage or that they're bad faith actors. But I do think these are serious blind spots. Into their change room. An offender. Did you ever think we get to this point? A multiple. Understand the goalposts keep moving, right? They're talking about Netflix. You need to hire a director who's trans. A VP who's trans. Say like, why? Now they're trying to tell companies how to run their shit, who they can or can't hire. This shit has gone mad. They're trying to. You keep saying they. I want to know who they is, Abba, because that term is so highly interpretive, and your viewers can perceive they as the entire trans community, or they can perceive they as the entire left, or they can perceive they as everyone in the field of academia. So I think it is important to specify who we're talking about so that words, or we at least we minimize the chance of words being used to reinforce negative opinions create the untouchables and there's that you can't mention us you can't talk about us in a derogatory way you can't talk about us in a comedic that. way you can't make fun of us it's like guys the, in comedy it's a simple rule it's either all okay or not okay 
That's how it works. You can't post these arbitrary... But that's not life. Life doesn't exist in those boundaries, even in comedy, right? Some comics do take the, their foot off the gas pedal. Some comics do create comedy around not punching down or mocking disenfranchised groups. Some comics do that. And that doesn't mean, you know, you got to stay away... Bill Burr, I think, is an example of someone who does toe the line well, even though he has had criticisms flung his way, too, about certain Three lines are like, trans people are dying, so you can't make jokes. Listen, every motherfucker's out here dying, okay? You don't get a special privilege in regards to what humor is or isn't acceptable. You can choose to not watch something. You can critique the special. You can say the special was trash. You can even say the tr special had some hate in it. That's fine. I'm not mad at that. When you try to cancel people, when you try to label what they're saying as violence, even though it's not, right? Because violence is criminal. Sorry, guys. You know what I think the issue is? And you know what I think makes Abba and Preach such powerful forces in intellectual cu culture? And I'll call it that because I do think they're intellectuals at their core. I think it's a fact that we as heterosexual men, we see these other groups' issues and concerns being acknowledged on a day-to-day -day basis. And we see them raising their voices and advocating for themselves and for each other. But who's advocating for us? Who's advocating for our feelings of marginalization? Who's advocating for the fact that men are starting to, or that women are starting to earn higher wages than men, are starting to reach higher education attainment? Who's advocating for? The fact that men are growing increasingly isolated and unconfident in our ability to interact socially and attract women who's advocating for us. And so I think sometimes we externalize those frustrations instead of creating a supportive community around each other to address these issues that we are facing, which are very real issues, which other groups do not see as very real issues. Instead, they would rather demonize us, call us incels, and paint masculinity with a broad brush of being toxic. All forms of masculinity are toxic. No, that's not true. That's not true. But I think our inability to define and delineate between healthy masculinity and toxic masculinity results in our own confusion. And that confusion manifests through anger and frustration. And that anger and frustration results in misogynistic views, anti-LGBT views. That's what I'll say about that. Being violent is criminal. I got an issue with that. People are changing all the definition of every word and then we're all just supposed to sit by and watch it. When the whole silence is violence thing, people are like, oh, yeah, if you don't speak, people get hurt. So no, that's not the way it works. Inaction is not an action. That's not the, that's not how it works. <laughs> no, nah, I, I disagree with him fundamentally on that. Think about all the decent white people who knew that racism was wrong in the 1950s and yet sat back and did absolutely nothing about it. Indecision is inherently a decision. You are deciding to remove yourself from the equation instead of being an active participant in society, in society's issues. And as a result, the people you might support silently are being dogged out and mistreated while you get to benefit from the privilege you have of being part of the dominant social majority. And in that instance, inaction is inaction. Is this, no, it's not though. That's not. <laughs> not speaking is speaking. No, it's not. Maybe I'm gathering my thoughts. Well, Maybe I have nothing to say. Can you well, you said everything with your silence. Can you stop? What? Can you stop walking around the room? I mean, you're not walking, but you're walking by Bro. not walking. Bro, stop. And by changing the words and have stop. everyone accept it, that is how they co-opt the power structures. That is how they make those changes that they want. Yes, well, you can change from female to male. No, bitch, you can't. You want to change your gender, male to woman to man? I don't care. But you can't change sexes. It's just you can't change definitions. I don't think anybody's saying that though. I, this is not good. And it reminded me of what happened to my good friend and mentor. I think they're Mike. way off base. Mm. It's what's happening with them. Mm. 
So what happened with him? It's basically someone making a comedy set, try to prove a point how you can't touch certain people. Mm. Not physically. I'm talking about you can't talk about certain people a certain way. And he talked I'm about really saying that, that you can't talk. People are still talking. So this goes back to like the false premise of cancel culture that it's a real phenomenon that is if it was real then donald trump wouldn't have won the election kanye west wouldn't be making billions and dave Chappelle damn sure wouldn't be on netflix so what i can't stand is what's called victimhood inversion a concept that comes from jason stanley over at yale this notion or this phenomenon that involves people in positions of privilege of immense power inverting the meaning of victimhood so as to say all right the real victims are not victims instead i'm the victim because they're criticizing me for victimizing them i think that steals credibility from people like dave Chappelle. i'm being canceled or i just handicapped kid he talked he talked about all the people that were untouchable so right. he spoke about celine dion he told celebrities celebrities and different people that you cannot talk mm. about yeah. in quebec and he talked about an handicapped kid how you cannot talk to him mm. uh, about him yeah and the people proved his point they sued him right he's right now waiting for his uh his supreme court yeah, if he doesn't pay the fine he goes to jail Yes, sir. No, yeah, yeah. So, so, so this is similar to that. You since, to me, I disagree. Yeah, I, I disagree with that entirely. Being sued because of comedy. And again, we have to consider that this is indeed an outlier. Put you into their imagination and have you believing things that aren't real. That's why you go on college campuses. Everybody got to walk on eggshells. Why? I, I, who says that, though? They've co opted. Do you. <sighs> For the most part, I do think Abba and Preach are independent thinkers with their own opinions, but it is concerning how their opinions on cancel culture and transphobia are in many ways replications of what you would hear on Fox News, what you would hear from a Tucker Carlson, from a Laura Ingram, from a Tammy Lauren, from a Candace Owens, from a Jordan Peterson. Real. That's why you go on college campuses. Everybody got to walk on eggshells. Why? Because they've co-opted that structure. Do you want to join a performer in the college? Prof. Remember when we went to that? Remember? No, when we no to- one is in, entitled to a certain platform. If people, if you go to a college and people don't want to listen to you and people don't show up, then that's their prerogative. You're not entitled to go to a college and speak and make money. You can go to a college and air your opinion, but you're not entitled to get paid to do that. Does that make sense? To that university to do a show and, and how I was and I was and I, and I was and I was ho- and I was hosting and I went to ask someone so hey wh- hey how you doing yeah wh- what's the name and I got met with and you were back on the side and I got met with a you don't have my consent to ask me my name and I just went oh boy and I just went with the show and you started laughing because how ridiculous that was that's why we don't do shows on campus that's why we don't do shows on campus no more we don't do comedy on campus no and we're not the only one yeah. a lot of comedians just voice their opinion about we're not doing shows on university campuses or college campuses because ugh 100% these people is are- it because ugh and because like people are talking shit and because people are like meeting you with the same energy that you're putting out or is it because you know people are running you out of the campus because if it's the latter then it's wrong if it's the first then you, know, you got to eat that you got to eat that man they're trying to censor folks they're trying to censor folks they're trying to have it in the back of your head that there's going to be tremendous consequences if you make jokes about trans people basically making themselves a a, a very special class that you can't even mock what are you smoking you're not special you're not different okay you get joked about like everybody else why for what reason and listen guys it's important and this to is going to empower people ah fuck I have a like preach. To Damn, be met with speech you don't enjoy you want to know why because it makes you more resilient yes it makes you more resilient and retaliating with violence is a basic human reaction and it's not something you should give into that's what savages and uncivilized people do just because someone says something to you want to get violent Uh, don't worry they're violent no 
you just said that. So them saying those words are violent is the same as violence? Kind of defeating the point you made at the very beginning, though. Human reaction. Beginning with violence is a, it makes you more resilient. And retaliating with violence is a basic human reaction. And it's not something you should give into. That's what savages and uncivilized people do. Retaliating with violence is a basic human reaction that you shouldn't give into because that's what savages and uncivilized you human beings do um it's interesting that he's using colonial words that were constructed by white men to reinforce the subjugation of black and indigenous people to label trans people and critics of dave chappelle's commentary as violent we see a couple of contradictions and incongruities there that i'm not sure he catches one is that He's saying that their words are violent, and yet words are not violent. Just because someone says something to you, you want to get violent. Uh, no words are violent. No. There's no substitute for violence. That's not violence, though. Telling someone their words aren't violence is not violence. In the same way that saying harmful things about a certain group of people is not inherently violent. Okay. Some of you need to build, like, thick skin. Y'all out here talking about I'm going to snuff somebody if they say something. And so do artists and creators, man. See, we are some of the most we are some of the most sensitive people. And I'll cop to that. As an artist, as a creator, as someone who exposes my work, my commentary to the world, I'm sensitive about my shit. I am. And I think it would be useful for us to be introspective about that instead of projecting all the time. And criticizing other people for being sensitive. How about we just acknowledge that we're all sensitive. And that's okay in certain respects. And that to accommodate certain sensibilities is also okay. What's wrong with you? What? Not any. This is what I kept thinking about. Silence is violence. It's like, nigga, I'm tired. I don't want to watch the news and fucking comment on some bullshit. Hey, silence is violence. But there's some people, you know, you know, there's some people that do threaten you. There's some people that use their words and they, you know, they challenge you to a boxing match. Yeah. And then you say yes. And then or the violence ensues. I like how you said you don't want to bring that shit up and then you brought that shit up. I didn't. I didn't mention no name. All right. Anyways, it, it for those of y'all who made it to the end of the video without downvoting or unsubscribing, appreciate you. Um, please comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I will see y'all next time. Peace.